Thursday the 18th of June and this is the morning devotion. Galatians chapter 5 verse 25 says, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Some years ago, we planted tomatoes in our greenhouse. We used long grow bags out of which sprouted the plants. We did very little. In fact, we pretty much did nothing. The things just grew up and uh, eventually filled the entire greenhouse with uh, rich, luxuriant leaves. Uh, it was quite a sight. Um, it looked like the greenhouse was about to explode with all this greenery. There's only one problem. In the midst of it, there wasn't one single tomato. Not a hint of the shade of red anywhere. Not even a hint of uh, round, green, unripe tomatoes. They just didn't grow at all. We were very confused about this and we discovered that you actually have to do things with the plants. You've got to tend them. Uh, you've got to prune them a little. You even have to shake them at times to allow fertilisation to take place. We just assumed that it would all happen automatically. By the time Paul was writing to the Christian churches in the region of Galatia, the church had expanded well beyond its Jewish believing roots in Jerusalem. The people who had believed that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. Because its message was, as Jesus said, for all nations, it had quickly spread beyond Israel and had reached the point where non-Jewish Christians pretty much equaled the number of Jewish background Christians. And that sparked a debate among the Christian community. Along the lines of the Jewish Christians were saying that for anyone else to be a Christian, they need to first follow the Jewish law, all the rituals and rites that, that they hold to. So Paul writes in response to this, and he says the church is to be one large multi-ethnic family, a people who relate to God on the basis of faith and not the Jewish law. It also means that Christians live God's way, by the Holy Spirit living in them. On the cross, Jesus had killed off the old way of living, as Paul puts it, all the things that hurt us and wreck our relationships and destroy our communities. And instead, he gave us a new life as we trust in him and live in the spirit. His life becomes our life, his character, our character. And this is revealed in the fruit of the spirit that is produced within us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness and self-control. But here's the challenge. Just like our tomatoes, fruit does not grow automatically. It needs cultivation. It needs to be tended to. Unlike us, who expected it simply to appear and blossom, whilst we did nothing, spiritual fruit, the life of Jesus working in us, requires tending. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit, what he wants to do within us. Let us allow him the opportunity to do that. He says because we trust in Jesus, we should live like we trust in Jesus. Or in other words, if we're tomato plants, we should produce tomatoes. And Jesus' Spirit is the key. We cultivate our faith by giving him access through his spirit to every part of our lives, nourishing ourselves by absorbing in the teachings of the Bible and the practice of prayer and letting it merge with our living as it absorbs into what we do, who we are and what we think. Jesus' life becomes ours. His character blossoms in us. And out of his spirit comes spiritual fruit. So today I ask you to give a thought to what could I do that cultivates my faith, that tends to the work of the spirit in me today? Let's pray. Lord, it is a miracle that the spirit of God would reside in my life, that the character of Jesus could 
become my character. Today I give thanks for the work of the Holy Spirit within me, for how I am shaped to become like Jesus, loving God and loving people. And I stand in wonder at how you have called your church from every nation, tribe and tongue, and how with all their differences you blend them into one body, one family. Today give me the courage to open myself to you, to allow your spirit access to every part of my life, to shape me, mould me, to be the person you have made me to be. And as I do, I pray for those whose lives have forced them to become someone they are not, whether it is through slavery and exploitation, or the bitter experience of ba being badly treated, or a reaction to life's circumstances, or peer pressure that is put upon them to behave in a certain manner. Those who feel the inner ill ease and discomfort of living out of sync with their nature. May your seed be planted in them and may you enable it to grow, as I pray today you would also do within me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so God's blessing be with you today.